everyone, it is a very good evening and welcome to the family hour here at Church of Uganda Family TV. My beautiful name is Claire Buenji, your world's favorite host. Well, this is the family hour and remember it comes to you every Monday to Friday under different themes. And don't forget that today we are here under the theme of parenting. This show is in partnership with Life Ministry Uganda. You can always check them out on the website or social media platforms. They will be happy to connect with you. Today we have a very great topic, which I know every parent out there will love so much. Our topic this evening is parenting in the digital age, understanding the digital risk. I know well the seasons have changed. Those that were parented in a di whole different season are being are parenting children in a whole different season in this digital era. And to discuss this great topic is a great, great gentleman. His name is uh, Mr. Mwesi J. Owen, who is a digital citizenship advocate and head of marketing and program here at Church of Uganda Family TV. I am very, very glad and privileged to host him here. I know you've seen him, and today he's coming to tell us about digital risks, especially in parenting. Join me, welcome this great gentleman right here in the studio. Hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. You're How welcome, you? you're welcome. Happy to have you on this show. Thank you. Been Pleasure looking forward mine. to have you on the show. So it's been, uh, it has been long overdue. I know, I know. Will you please say but hello? Later, later, never. Uh, absolutely. Uh, greetings, everyone. Yes, and yes. Uh, we look forward to sharing a lot uh, with this journey that has started on digital citizenship. And as Church of Uganda Family TV and the entire Church of Uganda, our focus to make sure that your home has a safe space as far as media is concerned. And our role is to equip you, your child, the parents, caregivers, to make sure that you can mitigate the risks that come behind the screens that we interact with every day. And also thriving it, embracing the good, but also protecting our minds, our children, from the bad that is out there. So greetings to you, and I know you're going to enjoy the show. Definitely, we will <laughs> enjoy the show. Yeah, it's quite timely, and I appreciate that we have the minds from you. Now, to begin with, why digital citizenship? Why this whole thing? I mean, you would have been become someone else, not this whole thing. Why that? Our, you see, uh, the Bible talks about seasons, and time changes. I'm privileged to have be a millennial, so I'm born between baby boomers mm -hmm. and the Gen Z. So in this world, I'm privileged That's also. That's a serious place <laughs> to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm privileged also to be able to learn, come into this world at a time when technology is advancing, mm -hmm. but also been favored to have had a chance mm -hmm. into what we call traditional parenting, mm -hmm. where the morals, the culture shaped the entire. Uh, family fabric mm. on how we live, the values we have. Exactly. So it becomes uh, much easier for a person who knew how parenting was then. I know. And now what? There is a whole new challenge exactly. for a new uh, yeah. technology-driven mm. parents. Mm. 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 So um, I say I'm privileged to be in that, mm. the same as you. Mm. However, the other big part is that I have a background in information technology, mm. and by practice. For over the years, I've been doing digital marketing. Oh. So I also know technology risks mm -hmm. at hand. Mm -hmm. I also know benefits at hand. Though with the increase of globalization, mm -hmm. a world with no borders mm -hmm. in our phones, I on know. our phones, on TVs, mm -hmm. on game playstations, mm -hmm. I'm aware of the danger mm -hmm. that our child out there okay. or your mm -hmm. child out there is facing. And it seems that there is a gap mm -hmm. where the parents are detached from the reality mm -hmm. that digital age is presenting, mm -hmm. both the good and the bad. And what to do with it? Because parents are clueless mm -hmm. on how to handle this. All they know is that their kids can't get their hands off the phone. Mm -hmm. All they know is that even themselves can't yeah. get their hands off the phone, but they don't know why. They don't know why. True. The question is, if that remains like that, what happens to our tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Mostly the young, tender minds who don't have the power to make a choice mm -hmm. as far as what they consume in mm -hmm. terms of information uh, is concerned. 
And also if you continue saying, let the world be flat mm -hmm. as the screen is, access the culture in UK, access the culture in, in, in the Caribbean, access the culture mm -hmm. in Asia and African. Mm -hmm. And then no one comes in to guide us and teach us how to embed the morals that we have as families into this digital age. Where does it lead to the young man grown in this generation, the Gen Z and the Alpha, that for them the world is flat, like you see this screen. So what will be the future of this young child? Mm -hmm. So if no one comes up to say, let's groom better digital citizens, like our parents did their best groom mm -hmm. citizens that are not interacting with mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. then we have a lost generation. Exactly. So That's digital right. citizenship comes to me mm -hmm. as a passion but more so as that ministry that gives me a purpose. Amen. I embed the professional side of me mm -hmm. into the purpose why I live in this age. Mm -hmm. And I pray that along the time to mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. many others will rise up to make sure that we can highlight the, 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 the danger that the digital age brings with these screens, but also empower children and parents to thrive in it because we are not going back. It's a big to age. Exactly. We're not going back yeah, to the yeah, So my question is, do we let things slip away like everything is normal? No. No, we have to do something. So someone it. has to mm. come up and say, hey, parents, uh, mm. we know you are struggling to deal with the phone. Mm. The internet is all new, exciting, but there is something that you have to be aware of. Exactly. So that is why digital citizenship is important mm -hmm. and that's why this very television and the Church of Uganda started the Safe Screen Safe Kids campaign. Mm -hmm. Idea is to empower children to thrive within the digital age while shielded mm -hmm. from the harm wow. that comes with it. Wow. So this is basically what we are pushing mm -hmm. the entire Church of Uganda, Church of Uganda Family TV. And not only us, there are other partners coming on board because mm. the danger is real as we shall be seeing mm. on okay. going forward. Now, thank you, Owen. And I love it. From all that you have said, mm. I want to, I, I believe that you have a muscle of yeah. dealing with your phones and technology and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a parent can't give what they do not have. Parents sure. themselves are struggling with this phone. You mentioned something that you have a phone, you don't know what to do with it, mm. I know. So, how, what, we want to take your mind on this whole thing. How can you par help a parent to first deal with, this, with themselves, especially with these phones and the gadgets and everything, and then they can be able to help the children? How yeah. have you done it? Uh, clearly, the first thing before even a parent gets to be equipped or to look at how to deal with this, the first thing is appreciate that times have changed. And key thing is highlight what has changed. Uh, Claire, if you look between me and you, there's what we call, we grew up in a time where our parents were more um, glued into what we call parental guidance. But now with the uh, immense technology, social media, billions, to be specific, 5.4 billion people on the internet, mm -hmm. the idea of parenting has shifted from parental guidance to media influence. So that innocent mind out there at six year old, four years, even I see three year old on phones dealing with whatever internet they are seeing, the exposure to all this kind of information is influencing more than the voices they're getting mm -hmm. or the guidance they're getting from the parents. So the start is accept that there has been a shift from parental guidance to digital influence. Mm -hmm. Secondly is the other shift of play-based parenting to screen-based parenting. Mm -hmm. When Claire would come from work mm -hmm. and or it's holiday, most times you'd find that you'd give your child perhaps a, a board game yeah. or you go play with your fellow kids mm -hmm. as you do your work at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. as a mother. But apparently the easiest thing is your kid will cry for your phone. Yeah. And at yeah, the end like of the day, what I would want to term as emotional manipulation, mm -hmm. and you see the tears and you're like, okay, have the phone. Ideally, you have no idea that the phone you've given has internet, and any time a pop-up can come in, you think that you've put a phone, maybe I've selected a, a, a YouTube video with these cartoons, you have no idea on the content of these very YouTube cartoons that you're giving to these mm -hmm. kids, because by nature, now research says 80% of 
what we call the GPT BT uh, content is embedded in pay platforms in cartoon for mm. kids content yes, and they are yes. still complaining mm. by the way that that is little they need to go to the free air where they wow. don't need first pay to mm. access and all that so you find yourself that when we accept that there's been that shift mm. where media influence is increasingly shaping how our children live mm. our children even view the spiritual world mm. i'll give you an example we just finished the olympics mm. At the opening ceremony of the Olympics, there was this setup of the Last Supper. Mm. Now, for Christians who understand the Last Supper with mm. Christ and the disciples, mm. the gay community did the exact, symbolically did it. And they were all portraying, lined up, having this Last Supper mm. kind of theme at the opening ceremony of Olympics. Among those who are on that Last Supper, is a kid who seemed to be around between seven and eight as part of them. Mm -hmm. Now, the Olympics opening ceremony was viewed by over 3.7 billion mm -hmm. people all over the world, wow. internet and on screens. Mm -hmm. Question, you are busy parents, mm -hmm. assume mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You are in home, you didn't even know about Olympics, mm -hmm. but your child knows about sports and is passionate about sports. And their eyes are glued on this TV seeing mm -hmm. the Last Supper, being redone or reditioned mm. by a mockery society that mm. says we can still redo this. Your Christian beliefs mm. are already mocked. Yeah. Now, a child who has no potential to know depreciates between what has been done on the screen at the opening ceremony of the Olympics 2024 mm. and the last supper being taught in the Bible want to know the difference. It simply means it will be very okay for me mm. to be gay and I'm a Christian. Literally, that's what it means. You've devalued every meaning of the Christian values in our homes. Mm. More so, there is a child. It's intentional that the child was part of this set. It means that even kids mm. are part of the agenda and they also have an influence to be part of this whole mess that they did. Mm. And this is just a drop of what media does. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, for you, mm. it's your parent who would say, uh, Claire, mm. for us in our home, we watch TV between this time and this time. Mm. It was even most of, most parents never live in the TVs, mm. but now a parent has the, every, our homes, every room has yes, a screen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Your parents, you have more than two mm. smartphones, mm. so it's easier to say <laughs> how yeah. this phone and, mm. and, and, and access. So we are in, in a big shift, mm. and there is a need to understand that mm. where there was parental guidance, mm. now we are in the age of media influence, where do we meet in the middle? Mm. Preserve the morals, the culture, the faith, or religious morals within the digital age so that parental guidance and media influence meet at some point. Mm -hmm. That your child mm -hmm. who is interacting with technology, being schooled around edutech mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. doing Zoom, mm -hmm. physical meetings are mm -hmm. done, family gatherings are done online, mm -hmm. gets to understand that I can do this mm -hmm. if I meet something that is not right with the values mm -hmm. that our family holds mm -hmm. as far as our culture is concerned, as far as our faith is concerned, mm. are preserved therein. So basically that's the beginning point. And then in there, when mm. you've done and understood the shift, mm. then you come to a position to assess yourself as a parent. Mm. Are you aware of the danger that happens? Yeah. Mm. To me, mm. that's a bit. Accepting that actually most parents are clueless mm. on the risk that lies <coughs> behind the screens. Mm. And when you've accepted the change and known that your kids, when you give them access to social media, they're being impressed by 5.4 billion people around the world. Mm. Different wow. cultures, different <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Then there you understand why your parents used to tell you that don't befriend that group of people. Mm. But in here, mm. the physical is no longer a risk actually. 
being in a community of schools <coughs> of one child that is no longer risk of influence, mm. but being in a virtual community of billions of people that you don't know about, there is a good person, there is a bad person. Mm. To me, that is more a bigger risk. With increased oh, globalization, mm, mm. it's a bigger risk. Mm. Then a parent out there asks themselves. Mm. So I, as I step on the trend of social approval, anyway, every kid has a phone. Every parent has bought a laptop. Or a <coughs> Before you jump into that, mm. have you assessed the other side? Mm. I'm not saying that by the way, all is bad. No. Yeah. We buy these phones for good reasons. But we can't be blinded from the danger that is out there. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Now, you're giving us facts, and I know the parent out there is... The heart is beating so, 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 so hard. Yeah. But we need to know all these things. And it's so clear that if we do not parent our children, there is someone out there that is ready to parent them mm. any way they want. So I know you talked about this briefly, but let's bring it out so clear. Mm. How has the rise of digital technology changed the parenting la landscape? One, there is a shift in power. Mm. Where the children are appearing to be more informed than us parents. That's quite true. It's a new so information generation. There is an information overload mm. Mm. on young mm. minds, where for academicians out there know that there is a reason why we have a preschool, primary level, even primary, is zoned into lower and upper. Mm. Then they go to secondary. At every different stage, academia felt that a child's mind or a grown-up mind must access a certain limit of information. Mm. But here we are, we have a whole unfiltered information groomed on the internet and everywhere, thrown into a very innocent mind, six, wow. seven. Who don't even know what to take, what to leave, like everything. To them, they everything is take, out there. Yeah. So in that, it has shifted the power of information because a kid can easily, you think it's out arguing you, mm. but can easily do that because literary parents have been more on the side of receiving rather than taking the proactive step of saying, can we also embed ourselves in being media literates? Mm. And that initiative is what is needed. Then secondly, there's been a huge shift from, for example, in talk of media influence. Mm. We don't look at it from only information access. We look at it from figures. For example, for me, I knew about Rambo by maybe in one way at school they put a Rambo video mm -hmm. on. But now your child knows all the yeah. top superstars. Exactly, yeah. However, 80 of the percent of those top superstars mm -hmm. subscribe to things that you don't believe in. So if I'm taking who is a top musician here? Let me give an example. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do no name calling, but let's say top secular musicians mm -hmm. here. Our schools are even taking them up. You find on speech yeah, days, they are them miming yeah. these songs. Yeah. They are calling them. They come almost semi-nude onto these people's mm -hmm. lives. Influence doesn't stop at information you get, but also the influence of the personalities you look up to. Mm -hmm. I, give an, I usually give an example. We've had most of the young actors and actresses mm. that these kids look up to as superheroes. Mm. Now, time comes and some of those people have shifted to embrace and actually publicly proclaim the gay community agenda. Mm. Question is, if I've grown up mm. as a kid admiring Claire mm. as a superstar, mm. young one, mm. Every day my mom makes a cake with mm. that cartoon character there. Mm. Then at eight years old, I'm following up them, 12 years, mm. they shift to that line. Yeah. Where does it leave me as a kid? Mm. Most likely, if I'm not guided from mm. right start, I will actually go with the influence of my superstar, my role model. Now, when we knew that best you to take you to go to a <laughs> to go to a family or wedding day to look at a musician, by the way. But now, from morning to evening, some stations have semi-nude videos running up and down. Ozambe songs mm. and all that. 
and some parents even go ahead even record these kids and post yeah. on social media yeah. for the footprint so in reality you realize that the biggest risk that we are having in this global sh change into the digital world is globalization mm -hmm. and the agenda of globalization and my culture inference is that flatten the culture beliefs, mm. flatten the religious beliefs. Mm. And you forget that for every strong family, is anchored on two things, mm. your spiritual values and your cultural values. Mm. Now, if those are not embedded into our kids, mm. wow. yeah. so that when I look at this TikTok video, mm. which 90 or percent of TikTok videos you find actually are not as educative. Mm. Though there are channels which are educative, but most of them are entertaining, and they're in semi-nude form, form, then it means that if I don't have those values, most likely I will take it as it is. But if a kid knows that, no, at our home, my mom says this is bad, mm. and the reasons are this and mm. this, there's a high likelihood that this kid mm. will look at it and won't interact with it. The same way how you work with mm -hmm. them. In natural setting, the analog setting, mm -hmm. they tell you don't run around mm -hmm. visitors. You don't. You don't, yeah. You don't talk while you're eating to, you know, on your table mm -hmm. while eating. And you all sit, talk, but now a father, mother, kid, they're on their dining table, everyone is holding their gadgets. Yes, yes, they talk about that. So, key thing is there's been value mm -hmm. degeneration and at a very high pace, and that's the biggest risk, by the way. Okay. Because you're dealing with a society with no values. I know. Now, even before we go any further, mm. I want to take your mind on this whole thing. You talked about TikTok, you talked about how some schools mm. bring people same nude and everything. Now, I want to get your mind on this. Uh, someone of recent was sharing, was, was sharing with me and was like, mm. now in this era, if you're this person who wants to sing about sense, look like eh, this whole mature thing, you will not get audience. Like people will not hear what you're talking about. Mm. Like there is what they want and there is a way they want you to look when you're to address some people mm -hmm. or talk about some things. What's your mind on that? You see, uh, we're in one of the forums, uh, the first forum actually we had about this discussion on self screens. And one of the artists told us that Morals don't put bread on the table. We don't eat morals. We don't eat values. We don't eat that. And that is out of the capitalistic life economy we are in, where everyone is surviving to earn a bread. We love things that are trending, and for moral things don't trend in the world that we've opened up to our kids. That's why most of the content that is there is to the agenda that is being pushed. It's immoral, it's nude, it's valueless, it's a world that is opening up to do what you want. You are generation Z, you can wake up, go on the street, do civil disobedience, but at the same time still, what is happening in Kenya? Now, we have to be cautious as parents. Me, I'm an artist. All I need is, I know TikTok will pay me, YouTube will pay me, if I get views. And I know that 70% plus of Ugandans mm -hmm. are under 30, and they don't believe in these morals. Who is to blame? Mm -hmm. As parents. Definitely, yeah. Now, if I'm going to earn a living from my entertainment work, what will I do? Mm -hmm. So for... This artist without morals, he doesn't go subscribe to Christian values, he doesn't subscribe to good morals and upbringing, don't expect good from them. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's, they bring out who they are from the bottom of their hearts mm -hmm. and their minds and morals and characters they display. Now, the dilemma is you get your phone, mm -hmm. you as a parent, you watch this. It's okay to watch these top stars. Mm. You will some even watch porn on their phones. And you share with your kids. Ah. Forgetting that this porn mm. of ours, mm. they are designed for marketing purposes. Mm. They are designed to grow you mm. to use them mm. addictively. Mm. And they do profiling based on what you search on. Yeah, times. you're right, yeah. So if, for example, you search 
photographic content or nude content mm. in your free time, even if like you went that, and yeah. gave your child mm. to watch a cartoon yeah, th that, that is that's, right. That is what they will recommend. After the cartoon mm. is done, mm. the next video they recommend is what you watch. Yeah. So the demand mm. for circular, moralless mm. community kind of content mm. that is paying these people because they're earning from it. Mm. And all these platforms, YouTube, wherever, that's their algorithm. They earn from adverts, from data and views. So the more people that view these things, the more they earn. Question is, are you sacrificing your morals and Christian and family values mm. at the expense of keeping your child mm. happy because they can access your phone and internet? Mm. So, we cannot do much about a certain owing out there mm. who is a secular person, doesn't know even whether you have values in your home or not, doesn't even care. Mm. All he cares is, have I got a mind at the end of the month from YouTube? Mm. How much have I earned? Just like you wake up every day to go to school. Wow. So they will not think about your values. It goes back to you as a parent to teach your child what to choose to watch, while on these screens, on these phones, or not. Also, to go back and say, how will I make an intentional plan mm. to protect my child from the predators that lie out there? Exactly. So, mm. as we talk later more about the risks, mm. we can dig deep mm. into what is that that the child is being protected. Mm. And why are we being so keen to say that we can't delegate mm. this role of raising responsible digital citizens mm. to a world mm. that is decaying. Exactly. A world that doesn't even hold any value again. And the enemy is more intentional than us. That's, exactly. To me, that's yeah. the biggest yeah. worry. Yeah. The LGBT community is more intentional at pushing their agenda into the media world more than anyone. But you as a parent, yeah, you're just there. You're saying, oh, my kid has cried him for fun. Where is the intentionality? Because you're saying that you're at the experts. When they're pushing what they're pushing, mm. see that, for example, we talk about information on the digital space. Mm. And we forget one fact that when I Google, Google just crowd sources. Mm. Right now, I can be an authentic writer and I put up things and Google will pick it up. Mm. This ray from right things to wrong things about medicine, about mm. faith, about academics. Everyone is a scholar in the digital space. Mm. Even what we put on social media mm. all goes back to these search engines. Mm. Now, when you say, for example, for education, mm. you go on Google, they mm. us, mm. they brought homework at home. Mm. And I have the phone, you try and Google it. You're thinking you're teaching your kid how to mm. use search engine. Mm. But you have no idea that actually your kid is not aware on how to filter mm. whether this information is right oh, no. or wrong. Yeah. But thank you, Owen. I'm so, so happy you're making a lot of <laughs> sense, and I'm glad we have you on this show. Yeah. But we'll take a quick break. The show returns in a bit. Please, dear viewers, don't change the station. Thank you. <laughs> 